古欲陶天下而隐于一家，谓之有道乎？上有丹砂者，下有黄金；上有磁石者，下有铜金。苟山之见其容者，君仅风而寄。Archaeologists have not been able to confirm the exact time when the ancient Chinese discovered magnets. But it was first recorded in a book, Guanzi, published in the spring and autumn period between 722 BC and 481 BC. The compass was referred to as Sinan in ancient China, which literally means commanding the south. People from the Zheng Kingdom during the spring and autumn period used Sinan to avoid getting lost. In addition to being a tool for direction finding, Sinan was also considered a symbol of wisdom. Legends have it that high-ranking officials manipulate and steal their king's power in a gradual way. They tell the king fraudulent lies each day until the king becomes completely disoriented and can no longer tell where the south is. To keep their good judgment. The kings relied on Sinan to steer the country to the right direction. The Sinan built in the Han Dynasty was composed of a little spoon and a dish. The spoon was made of polished natural magnetic ore. The head of the spoon resembled a hemisphere. When one pushed the handle of the spoon, it spun on the dish. The dish was made of copper. It had a rectangular shape and a round hole in the center. On the rim of the hole, there were marks of the eight diagrams, the ten celestial stems or ten gan, and the twelve terrestrial branches or di zhi. There were markings of twenty-four different directions on the dish. After being spun into motion. The little spoon in Sinan rotates, but will always settle down, pointing the south. Ancient Chinese discovered the existence of the south-pointing property of magnetic energy based on their understandings of the cosmos and its correspondence with the human body. The design of Sinan is an application of this wisdom. Stems or tengan and the twelve terrestrial branches or di zhi together are also called gan zhi. Their combinations form a cycle of sixty. The Chinese people have used these combinations to designate years for nearly three thousand years. Tengan and di zhi are also used to designate days and hours in the Chinese lunar calendar. The twelve terrestrial branches correspond to the twelve shishen or time segments in a day, whereas each shishen is equal to two hours. The Southern Song Dynasty between 1127 and 1279 A.D. used the sundial to tell the hours in a day. During the summer, the shadow of the sundial is shorter. During the winter time. The shadow of the sundial is longer. Zhang Heng invented an earthquake indicator in 132 A.D. during the Eastern Han Dynasty. Even to this day, the mechanical principle behind it is still a mystery. Zhang Heng's earthquake indicator looks like a wine cup with a diameter of about eight feet, made of refined copper and full of decorations. There is a hole in the middle of the equipment. Outside the equipment, there are eight dragons, each of which holds a copper ball in its mouth. Under each dragon, there is a toad with its mouth open, waiting for the copper ball to drop. If there were an earthquake, One of the dragons would spit out the ball, which would fall into the mouth of the toad underneath, indicating the direction where the earthquake had occurred. 
It had accurately indicated the occurrences of numerous earthquakes. On one occasion, a ball dropped. Several days later, people learned that an earthquake did occur on that day, a few hundred miles away. In a floating method, a magnetic needle is pulled through the middle of a special kind of dry grass that flows on water. Buoyancy of the dry grass will turn the magnetic needle to show the direction of south. In the silk hanging method. A magnetic needle is fixed to a silk rope that is hanging on a wood shelf. A round tray with direction marks is put under the needle. When the needle stops spinning, it shows the direction of south. In a nail method, a magnetic needle is placed on a smooth surface made to look like a human's thumbnail, and the needle would turn to point to the south. Finally, with a bow brim method. The magnetic needle is put at the brim of a bowl. Among the four methods, the silk hanging method was the most precise. But when applying it, there were many limitations, such as that there should be no wind. When Shen Kuo was verifying the silk hanging method, he repeatedly found that the needle didn't precisely point to the south, but instead to the southeast. Thus, he discovered geomagnetic declination. This was the earliest record about geomagnetic declination in the world. In the Yuan Dynasty, from 1279 to 1368 A.D., there were stands for the compass, such as the direction-finding turtles and the direction-finding fish. The magnet was installed inside of the stomach of the turtles or fish that was held in place by a vertical needle. The dry box compass appeared in the Ming Dynasty between 1368 to 1644 A.D. It used a nail to hold the magnetic needle at the center of the box. The friction force of the pivot was so small that the needle could turn freely. Because of the fixed pivot. The needle will not wander around as on the surface of water, so the dry box compass was more appropriate for sailing than the water box compass. In the Ming Dynasty, navigator Zheng He led a huge team of ships to explore the Occident seven times. The team contained more than twenty-seven thousand people in more than sixty ships. Each ship has a box compass as well as a navigational map. These big ships were called treasure ships. The largest one was about 400 feet long, 40 zhang, and 180 feet wide, 18 zhang. This team traveled to over 30 countries and to many other places, such as the Indochina archipelago and the South Seas. Team even reached the east shore of Africa. In about the 12th century, through trading, the technology of the compass was spread to Arabia and later to Europe. Thank、you